Hi there, would you like to be able to have health every single day and freedom from colds and flus and freedom from degenerative disease or freedom from cancer or osteoporosis or disc degeneration or joint deterioration? You know, all these things that I've just described, including high blood pressure, can be linked to and have their cause in having an acid pH in the body. So perhaps you've heard about pH before and you've been taught to test your pH to find out if you're acidic or alkaline and then take supplements to try and make yourself alkaline. Well, most people aren't aware that the saliva pH is really the only important pH to reflect your body pH. Your urine reflects only what's being excreted. And it does give you some important information, but it's not as important as the saliva. So the primary thing that you want to test is your saliva pH. You can test your urine too. It'll have some meaning and I'll get to it in a second. <clears throat> but if you're relying upon basic calcium citrate or um, different forms of calcium supplementation to try and maintain an alkaline pH, for the most part, um, people are unsuccessful with those particular methods, including coral calcium. Coral calcium works to a degree, but it's not as strong as I'd like it to be. It, takes, it works, but it takes longer to work than what I'd like. And so I'm going to introduce you to some products today that will support a more quicker return to an alkaline pH. <clears throat> so first off, I just want to say that a Dr. Carl Reich was the first medical doctor to sort of introduce um, calcium supplementation into his medical practice and vitamin mineral supplementation and turn his patient's health around simply by addressing their pH and their nutrient needs. And he found back in the 1970s, he started his practice in the 50s, but he found in the 1970s that people's health existed when their saliva pH was between 7 and 7.5. Um, and they had a plentiful supply of ionic calcium in their saliva. When their saliva pH was below 7.0, and it was actually down to um, 6.5 to 6.0, um, then they were experiencing diseases. And so by getting them on some calcium supplementation, some vitamin mineral supplementation, <clears throat> over the course of weeks and months, their pH of their saliva would gradually come back to 7.0 and their health would either improve dramatically or the condition would go away completely. So it's already been proven in clinical practice that pH is the predominant and controlling factor in your in your body and its health. So there's various reasons to pay attention to this that I'm about to outline for you here. <clears throat> One of them is that it's essential for cell division. In other words, you have to have enough ionic calcium present for your body to make um, and convert sugar into the four basic nucleotides that make DNA. Um, those are um, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Also, for your body to be able to make energy, for the cell to be able to make energy, calcium, ionic calcium has to be present. You have to have an alkaline of pH for there to be an adequate oxygen level. pH controls oxygen. So when you're alkaline, you have oxygen-rich tissues. When you're acidic, you have oxygen-poor tissues. In order to absorb calcium, you have to have enough vitamin D lining the small intestine. It's called vitamin D receptors. And most people are aware that vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin, so you can get it if you're in the sun enough. Most people are not in the sun enough. It needs, you need at least two hours exposure in the sun during the daytime, not at sunrise or sunset, but during the day in order to get enough vitamin D production on your skin. And then you would need more of your body exposed than just your arms and your face. <clears throat> so people are living indoors. We work indoors. We're basically cave dwellers. And so therefore people have a chronic um, vitamin D deficiency and need to supplement from some source, which I'll introduce you to here shortly. Um, also, your cell's ability to uptake nutrients is increased by the presence of calcium. So it's of all the minerals, it's the one that pulls more nutrients inside the cell than any other mineral your body needs. Calcium deficiency outside of the cell stimulates the proliferation of both viruses and cell mutations. Royal Raymond Reif developed a microscope that could see virus, fungus, and bacteria in a living state back in the 20s and 30s. And with his powerful microscope and his 
many, many hours and years of research, he documented and proved that no infectious process, no virus, no fungus, and no bacterial infectious process could occur in a neutral pH of 7. Now, you've never heard that in television news. You've never heard that or read that in uh, news publications and or magazines. And yet it should be known by everyone because what that means is that you could be exposed to any organism that has the potential for creating an infection in your body and if your body is alkaline and its pH, it is, it is impotent, it is uh, unable to affect any infectious process in your body. So the greatest strength to your immunity is not a white blood cell army that can produce antibodies. It is an alkaline pH of 7. That is your greatest protection from catching any cold or flu, period. And that's what you need to know because if you're on a plane and you're concerned about catching somebody else's germs or any of that, it's totally unnecessary if you take care of your body pH and a few other things. Also, many times people say they have a thyroid, a low thyroid function, um, they have the deficiency of insulin production, a tendency of diabetes, they have low adrenal hormone production, um, uh, and these things can also be connected back to your pH of your body because the pH determines hormone secretion, hormone uptake, and um, therefore, therefore blood sugar levels, in other words, the absorption of insulin, the absorption of glucose into the cells is all pH dependent. The level of thyroid hormone, the level of adrenal hormone, all these things are dependent upon an alkaline pH. If they're not alkaline, then you will have a, your glands struggling to produce their hormones and your cells struggling to absorb what the hormones are supposed to do. From 1950 to 1990, there's approximately 7,000 studies that have been done to document the positive broad spectrum effects of calcium in the body. And again, I said pH controls oxygen levels. Dr. Otto Warburg discovered back in the late 1920s how cells breathe, how they use oxygen, and he also discovered how cancer is made and he very conclusively proved that once tissue oxygen levels decline by 40% or more, normal cells have to convert over to an alternative method of making energy in the absence of oxygen and they become tumor cells. And spontaneously in an anaerobic or a low oxygen environment, viruses and fungus spontaneously grow in those tissues as well. So there's always viruses and fungus associated with cancer. So one of the things Dr. Carl Reich found was that healthy blood pH is 7.4, healthy spinal pH is 7.4, and healthy saliva pH is 7.4. <clears throat> that when the outside of your cells pH is 7.4 and the inside of the cells pH is 7.4, the inside of the cell will metabolize all of the nutrients and create metabolic wastes and acids and its pH will drop down to 6.6. .6. When the inside of the cell pH drops to 6.6, .6, an electrical potential difference of 70 millivolts exists between the outside and the inside, and the inside of the cell, then the, the energy exists for a channel, for the channels inside the cell walls to open up and absorb the nutrients and the alkaline minerals outside of the cell into the inside of the cell and the waste inside of the cell to excrete out. And then this 6.6 .6 intracellular pH raises to the 7.4 uh, pH and the balance is restored. And this cycle keeps repeating itself. And this is how nutrients are absorbed. This is how energy is made. And when your outside cell pH drops below 7.4 and it goes to say 6.8, then the inside cell pH has to drop far below 6.6. .6. It has to go perhaps to 6.0 in order for there to be an electrical voltage creation and therefore an energy difference so that the cell channels open up and absorb nutrients. And when the cell intracellular pH drops too acidic, the oxygen levels drop too low, then it chronically makes acids and renders the cell oxygen poor. And then again, the cell in the absence of enough oxygen transforms itself into an alternate method of making energy and when it's done that transformation it is now called a tumor cell.